Hi, everybody. My name is Mackenzie. Oh, and she's gone. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, her name was Mackenzie. My name is Austin. I'm the liaison officer for the Ohio Green Party, uh, Young Greens. Sorry about that for that incident, a little technical malfunction, but she will be back as soon as possible. But today we are bringing to you a live stream about the topic of hunger. It is an ever-growing issue and ever-growing concern here in the United States and many places around the world. And we will start today with our introductions. Um, Aiden, could you introduce yourself, please? Hello, my name is Aiden Raymond. I am a new member of the Ohio Green Party Youth Caucus. Um, I reside in Springfield, Ohio at the current time of this recording, and uh, I look to be more involved in, with the Green Party. Great. Thank you for joining us, Aiden. We're very happy to have you. Zach, could you introduce yourself? Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Zach. I am from Cleveland, Ohio, and I am the public relations office holder for the Young Greens of Ohio. Um, I'm really hoping to continue with this and... It's a great party, so you should join. Yes, if you're interested in joining the Ohio Green Party, please visit the ohiogreens.org slash join. With that being said, let's uh, get started with today's question, today's live stream. Again, our topic today is on hunger. There's a lot of issues in the United States around food insecurity um, and the phrase food, food insecurity in the United States. Uh, is there a problem with that here? Aiden? I do believe that there is a major food insecurity problem in the United States. Um, I mean, just looking at our numbers of homelessness in America, which can correspond with food insecurity, including people that are currently not homeless, um, I believe that it's a major problem and something must be done about it. Absolutely, it's a major problem. Mackenzie joined and then was kicked again. So I, she's having a few technical difficulties. Um, but Zach, is, um, is hunger or food insecurity a problem in the United States? Um, there is a hunger insecurity in the United States, but I would say that there is a hunger insecurity in all parts of the world, kind of like on a global scale um, in a lot of different countries. It happens everywhere. Um, we live in a world where not everyone views things such as food, housing, or even healthcare as human rights and essentials. Those, are, those who are at an economic disadvantage may not have access to certain resources that others could have that are not at an dis economic disadvantage, so. Yeah, that's so true. It's quite a surprise in the year 2023. We have so many people going hungry in a world where mm -hmm. we waste so much food. Mm -hmm. um, Mackenzie is back, so I will hand over the control of the live stream to her. Yeah, again, guys, I am so sorry. I kept kicking myself out of the meeting, so sorry about that. Um, so we already answered question one. Are we on to question two? Yes, correct. All right, um, Zach, how can hunger or food insecurity be a problem in one of the richest countries in the world, such as the US? Um, I would say a couple things, a couple just flat out things such as improper distribution of wealth, poor leadership, lack of prioritization uh, concerning issues that are more important than others. The two major parties have failed us time after time, election after election, um, and it's definitely time to stop voting red or blue and to just vote green. It's worked in other countries. Yep. Um, Austin, how can food insecurity uh, still be in a problem be a problem in a country that is called the richest country in the world? It's straight up a fa policy failure. There is no, there's no, oh gosh, I forgot the word. There's a distribution error. There's a distribution failure. We have enough food to feed everyone. We have enough food to feed twice the population. Uh, the center of the United States is such rich farmland that the fact that people in the United States are still dying of malnutrition and hunger is absolutely 100% not only a policy failure, but an economic failure 
to where people can't afford to eat. It's really sad and really pathetic of uh, an excuse. Aiden, how can food insecurity still be a problem in one of the richest or greatest countries in the world? I am going to go with the first thing everything everyone else was saying, and that's the distribution uh, errors and also climate change. Uh, climate change has started affecting crops of the world, and so has war. War has uh, hit Ukraine, and with that, crops in Ukraine that much of the world relies on are going scarce. So. Okay, my next question is, um, what could be part of the cause of food insecurity in the United States, besides what we just named? Um, Austin? Uh, cause of food insecurity in the United States. Uh, I know we said besides what, but it can all be boiled down to capitalism. Uh, for example, recently, there was a shortage of baby formula in the United States. And the reason why there was a shortage of baby formula is because the concentration of wealth was, or the concentration of production of baby formula was vested in one or two corporations who were all, at the end of the day, all owned by the same group, the same people. And these corporations decided that babies aren't profitable anymore. So they just stopped making baby formula because they couldn't run a profit. And that happens time and time again with our food resources in the United States is that food is just not profitable. That's why we see food service workers getting paid $2 an hour and everyone else forced to finance their um, working. The failure in their company to give them a living wage. Most of the places, food service industries are multi-billion dollar multinational corporations. They can afford a living wage for their workers. However, they take advantage of these lax labor laws in the United States and the laws surrounding, surrounding tipped workers to where they only have to pay two or so dollars an hour. But again, they're multinational, multi-billion dollar co corporations. But yes, it's, it's simply an economics issue. Yep. Um, Aiden, besides what we've named before, what else could be part of the cause of food insecurity in the United States? Um, well, the constant changes of prices and the very, very low wages that uh, workers make in the United States. Uh, some The national minimum wage is still around the $7 mark. That is nuts. While a combo meal at McDonald's is around the same price. It it's uh it all comes down to the economics of it. Uh the problem is capitalism. It's as simple as that. Yeah. And some people might argue that people shouldn't go out and buy fast food or stuff like that when it's honestly getting much more expensive now to even buy stuff that you can make at home. When you make like $2 an hour, how are you supposed to afford that, let alone fast food, which is honestly cheaper sometimes at this point. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, Zach, um, what could be part of the cause of food insecurity in the United States? I would definitely have to say that the biggest contributor to this issue is the free reign capitalism um, with corporations that are given the ability to pay their workers the least amount of money they want and little government intervention. If we had more government intervention, an economic bill of rights and better leadership within DC, I believe that we could eventually see the end of this issue. All right, my next question is, um, so we've talked about how capitalism, capitalism impacts um, food insecurity. So my question is, why wouldn't the ruling class advocate for well-fed workers? Um, why do they seem to basically do nothing um, to lower the cost of food when food is the fuel that fuels their workforce? Um, Aiden? Well, uh, 
All right, we'll get back to Aiden. Zach? Um, to put it simply, because it costs them money, um, it takes more money out of their pockets, reflecting on the last question, poor prioritization of what's important and what isn't, and no one is there to ensure it doesn't happen. Yep. Um, Austin, why wouldn't the ruling class advocate for well-fed workers? You'd think they would, because a healthy, well-fed, active worker is mm -hmm. one of the best products, one of the best things for the capitalist industry. Uh, however, why they don't, I have no idea. Um, again, that's capitalism in the book versus real capitalism that actually happens in real life. Um, they fear monger about socialism, people going hungry and bread lines in socialism, but we already have that here in the greatest country of the world. Workers queuing up for bread lines because they can't afford to eat. Uh, mm -hmm. People choosing whether to keep their lights on or feed their children that month. People choosing whether or not to go to the doctor or take care of their nutritionary needs. Uh, yeah, sure, it's great that the United States, you walk into a supermarket and you see all these different foods, floor to ceiling, packed full of food, but is that food really quality? Is mm -hmm. it just cardboard in a box with a few bug wings that are allowed through? Is it just sawdust and sandpaper? Um, so it's great to, that we have all this food, all of this stuff here in the United States, but is it, if is it, is it quality? Is it nutritious? Is it taking care of the needs of the people? And I think, no, um, the United States, it, the American people eat as if we have free healthcare. Uh, mm -hmm. However, that is furthest from the truth. Especially because the food that's actually good for you is so expensive compared mm -hmm. to the food that you can get at Walmart. Um, like if you go to Whole Foods, it's three times the price of the GMO infested foods at Walmart. So yeah, absolutely. It's priced out of out of range for most people poor yep. and hourly waged workers. It's absolutely unaffordable and it's ridiculous that we deserve a right to healthy, nutritious food. And I don't want to eat crap all day, every day, but yeah. if it's the only thing I can afford, then I have no other choice. Food. Yeah. Um, Aiden, uh, I see that you're back with us. Um, why doesn't the ruling class advocate for well-fed workers when we're the ones who do all their dirty work, brute force work, I guess you call it? All right, looks like Aiden might be having technical um, difficulties. I will move on to the next question. Um, so what would the Green Party do if we got them in office to combat food insecurity? Zach? All right, looks like Zach might be having some technical difficulties. Um, Austin, what would the Green Party do to combat food insecurity? One of the core key tenements of the Green Party is localization. So the Green Party really pushes for local ownership and local production. So how we would go about combating hunger is basically from the start, local community gardens, uh, making sure everyone has access to clean, uh, healthy food in the garden um, and making sure that it's not illegal to have a community garden. Because in a lot of places in Ohio, a lot of places in the United States, it's illegal to have a community garden. So making sure people can have their own food, grow their own food, and also planting community fruit bearing trees, whether that's apples, oranges, all the other stuff. Because again, in a lot of places, this type of stuff's illegal. They don't want you, <laughs> they don't want you producing your own food taking care of yourself, being self-sustainable, um, growing, planting community apple trees is not legal in a lot of places, which is absolutely mind blowing. Um, Cause it's not profitable. It's not profitable. Mm -hmm. It's actually the reverse of profitable. Yep. It's not healthy to the cap capitalists uh, for people to be eating for free, but yes, local community gardens, legalizing the planting of community gardens, gardening, uh, community-based 
fruit bearing plants and trees along the sidewalks um, and prioritizing food banks and local community kitchens. Yeah. Um, Zach, um, it looks like you're back. Um, what Sorry could the Green Party... Oh, you're fine, you're fine. <laughs> um, what would the Green Party do to combat food insecurity? Um, the Green Party knows how to prioritize issues and to decipher time management skills and um, what needs the most attention. The small amount of offices that we have been elected to across the country have been above sufficient and Greens have and always will deliver, so. Awesome. Um, mm -hmm. Aiden, if you are back with us, um, what could the Green Party do to combat food insecurity when we're in office? Well, most Greens uh, view food as a natural human right, which it should be. So. I think what the Green Party could do is uh, lower food prices on a national scale um, if they can nationalize the food industry. Um, and what Austin said, can legalize community gardens, um, just simple stuff like that. Uh, even promote or have like education classes about having your own self-sustaining garden. Yeah. Yep. And that's all stuff we could do in local offices too. So it's like more tangible something. than we think. Hmm? I would like to add something if we have time. Yeah. Go right ahead. A lot of issues surrounding hunger are also issues surrounding corporate farming. Um, I think Bill Gates is the biggest owner of farmland or any land as a private individual in the United States. And this creates a corporate farming economy and it destroys the livelihoods of small producers in the United States and developing countries as well because these corporate farms get government subsidies and drive down the prices of certain foodstuffs. So, and they don't even sell it to the Americans. They send it to someplace else or just completely destroy it. And because they're using these government subsidies to artificially drive down the price, grain prices, this causes poor families in Africa and Asia who sell their crops on the international market to not even be able to compete. Um, they have to lower their prices in turn, continuing their, pro their poverty and undercutting their profits in the capitalist global economy. Also, with the food problem in the United States, we have terrible, terrible exploitation of migrant workers whose labor rights are not protected in the United States. Ohio specifically, we have tens of thousands, if not a hundred, hundreds of thousands of migrant laborers working in the farms, and they are not protected. And they, this also uses their artificially cheap labor to undercut domestic and small medium producers in the United States because small family farms can't hire, can't afford to hire the uh, migrant workers whose rights aren't protected. Um, so I think moving back to family farm economy, local community gardens, um, and making sure we don't fall victim, continuously fall victim to the corporate farming industry who has enough money and enough power to buy lobbyists to uh, get the environmental laws changed so they can pollute every river in the city, in the state, and to creating a truly egalitarian food distribution system so we don't have to worry about if one company goes under, where the hell are we going to get all of our cheese sticks? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Um, the last thing I want to add is how we can help people who are experience food insecurity right now. Um, you can volunteer at your local soup kitchen um, or food bank. You can always donate to your local food bank. Um, and you can also vote for Greens locally. We don't have to win like the presidency to be able to um, have impactful change. A lot of these issues are local issues that can be solved locally. Of course, it'd be awesome if we could solve them big picture, but if we start locally, maybe that'll have some change. Um, widespread. Um, does anyone have anything to add about what we can do to help people experience in food insecurity right now? Yes, the Greens have been on the forefront of this issue for many years. We are not a social club. We are a political party and an activist-driven political party. 
And we have been on these issues for 30 some odd years since our inception in the 1980s. So if this is a big issue to you, if you're very interested in creating an egalitarian, balanced, democratically controlled food production system, then the Green Party is your political party. Zach or Aiden, I think you guys Go right ahead. I think Sorry. that we could volunteer in our local food pantries um, by spreading awareness and um, to see the change, you must be the change. And I'll forever say that. So. I love that saying. Um, mm -hmm. Aiden, do you have anything? Uh, yeah, you. Uh, if you have the resources available, uh, go ahead and run a food drive in your own city. Uh, have other people from different neighborhoods in your city help you and just advertise it anywhere and distribute it to people in need. There are tons of anarchist organizations around the country doing this. For example, Food Not Bombs is an anarchist organization that is, again, Food Not Bombs. When a, when a company goes under or, for example, a, a trucker is delivering food to a place and the order gets canceled, he has a truck full of food that he can't do anything with. So that trucker calls Food Not Bombs and says, hey, I'm here, here, here. I have a whole semi-tractor trailer full of food and the order just got canceled. This happened one time um, with Sabra hummus. Don't buy Sabra because hummus is uh, a Palestinian food, but Sabra is an Israeli company. Um, but the Sabra hummus ca canceled their order and they ha he had a whole tractor trailer full of hummus. So we called his local Food Not Bombs and the Food Not Bombs activists went out to wherever the truck was, collected the food and took it to the food pantry. And I remember I, um, being a part of Food Not Bombs, we got, personally, I got 18 packages of Sabra hummus for free. <laughs> um, so yes, contact and, um... your local Food Not Bombs. Yeah, we will actually put a link to the Food Not Bombs um, for Ohio in the um, or in the link when we post this video. All right, and that is it. Thank you for joining me, Austin, Zach, and Aiden um, for our hunger um, rights live stream. Sorry for all the technical difficulties, and everyone have a good night and enjoy spring. Bye.